nerds of the universe, and welcome to Nerd Talk. Now, it's been a very long time since I've posted a video, and I wanted to formally apologize. I think it's been like over a month since I've posted a video, and it wasn't a very thrilling video at that, not very long either. I've been very caught up with school recently. I'm preparing for college and for end of the year stuff, so I've been very preoccupied, but I always have time for Kenobi. Originally, I was working on a theory for the new Halo TV series, but that didn't pan out because of the time. Uh, but I do have time to analyze the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer. Now, I know a lot of people have already analyzed this trailer because it's been out for a while. I know I'm late to the game, but I might have some new perspectives on what I think might happen in the series and certain things like that. So, without further ado, let's first just get into... I want to talk about the time period of Kenobi, because Kenobi actually takes place at the same time as Jedi Fallen Order. And that's actually a very unique detail. Well, not necessarily unique, but that's actually a very interesting detail, because they both take place five years after Revenge of the Sith, essentially. And both of them have the Inquisitors hunting down the Jedi. So in Jedi Fallen Order, it's Cal Kestis running from the ninth sister, Trilla, the second sister, and of course, Vader in the end. And Kenobi also has Obi-Wan running from all of these Inquisitors and Darth Vader. And so we might actually see uh, some sort of hint that Vader and the Inquisitors are going after these people at the same time. And it would also make sense uh, in the context of Jedi Fallen Order, because none of the Inquisitors present in the Kenobi series, as far as we know, the ones that we've seen, are present in Jedi Fallen Order, and vice versa. And the Ninth Sister, e even in the Jedi Fallen Order, the Ninth Sister uh, says to Cal Kestis that when she kills him, the Grand Inquisitor would reward her greatly. And the Grand Inquisitor never shows up in Jedi Fallen Order, and this might explain where he's been this whole time. So, I'm very excited to see that. Um, maybe we even get a live-action Cal Kestis. That would be really cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's just hop right into the trailer. fight is done. We lost. All right, I want to stop it right here. First of all, that music, oh, it gives me chills. It gives me chills. The music always gives me the chills. And there he is. I mean, he's kind of blocked by the goggles right here, but there he is, Ewan McGregor. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. Now, a lot of people have already talked about this, how he's saying the war is over, we've lost. Many people are assuming that he's saying that to Qui-Gon, uh, the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon, because now that Obi-Wan is in solitude on Tatooine, he's going to be getting some lessons from Qui-Gon on how to manifest his soul after death and become a Force Ghost. But I don't necessarily think that he's talking to Qui-Gon here because it sounds kind of redundant. Because Qui-Gon's been watching this whole time, I'm sure he knows that the war is already over and that we've lost. I think he might actually be talking maybe to Uncle Owen. And I think that that's something they'll actually touch on a lot in the Kenobi series. I think we'll, we will get a strengthening relationship between Obi-Wan and the Larses, Owen Lars and Maru Lars. And so I think that might be who he's talking to right now. He could be talking to Qui-Gon, and it could be Qui-Gon trying to give him some sort of pep talk, and Obi-Wan, you know, saying, no, we already lost the war. But, uh, yeah, that's just what I think. And, of course, we got to see just now a young Luke Skywalker. I'm actually very excited about that and very disappointed that nobody else is talking about how we have a young Luke Skywalker. And if I go back just a hair, you can see that he's wearing... Oh, hold on, let me go back. You can see that he's wearing goggles and pretending to pod race just like his father, showing that he does have a lot of his father in him. He actually looks older than five years old here. Uh, he looks like he might be, uh, honestly, around seven or eight. And so maybe the goggles make it look weird. I don't know. So let's just continue watching. Stay hidden. 
Ah! Ha, ha! Duel of Fates! And this, and this. This is the Inquisitor base from Jedi Fallen Order. I'm forgetting the name of it right now. But Cal Kestis was here. He came here. So this would actually be a perfect way to set up Cal Kestis being in the Kenobi series. A perfect way. The timeline matches up. The places match up. It would be perfect. It would be great if at some point... We see the Grand Inquisitors, like, running through this facility, and they, like, almost see Vader fighting Cal Kestis. That would be so cool. And uh, here we have an Inquisitor ship. I can only assume that the Grand Inquisitor is in there, flying towards this place. It could also be the new Inquisitor, which we will touch on in a second. His patience. Hold on. We know what we have to do. Ah. <sighs> People have already beat this over the head. I know people have already beat this over the head. And, I, and trust me, I was beating it over the head the second I saw this trailer. What the hell is this? And, and, and this has been a trend with the new Disney Star Wars adaptation things, when they do live action adaptations. For some of the people, they just literally throw on paint and just hope it'll go away. First of all, what the heck? The first thing I noticed was the fact that the markings on his head and the markings on his eyes are not even red. They just look like they're carved and they might be red, but they're not nearly as pronounced. It should honestly be this red. This red that's on its outfit, it should be like popping out. They need to add depth to this character design. Like, it's, it's painful to look at. And it, his skin shouldn't even be that white, honestly. If we end also... I'll just, I'll, I'll just pull up one second. So this is a picture that's been floating around a lot because it really shows this is the live action version of the Grand Inquisitor's species from Revenge of the Sith. Look at how much effort and detail is put into this model. Tall, elongated head, the red the redness under the eyes, the, the crooked teeth. And then look at this. My God, that's disgusting. Wow. That is really, really repulsive. This is, this would, I would much rather see this than this. My, this looks loads, but yeah, they added the little things here. This looks loads better. You know, you get rid of some of the redness here. You add like the red tattoo marks here, right? Maybe you make maybe you make his skin a little whiter and and that's it. That's it. That's all you do. Even look, even this version, even the animated version of the Grand Inquisitor is not as white and has more depth than whatever the heck this thing is. It's just not I it's just not good, guys. It's just not good. It really isn't. And, and people like to compare this to the Cad Bane thing. This is not like the Cad Bane thing. That is, that is something that had a live action thing, had an animated thing, and they had to just morph it together. The Cad Bane model honestly looked good, okay? I know I complained about the skin not being blue enough, but they had to combine the two things. This is something where clearly there is a live action version of the species that looks a lot like the animated version. And they did this. It, it's it's stupid. It's stupid. They, they didn't even have somebody like, like this. Jason Isaac. It would have been a lot better of a head shape for this. A lot better of a head shape. Uh, and I know he's expensive to get, but whoever... No, no, no hate to, to this actor. But just... They did not do the Grand Inquisitor justice. They didn't do him justice. Jedi cannot help what they are. Aha, here we go. The inside of the Inquisitor base. We have this new character. First of all, we have the fifth brother here. In Star Wars Rebels, he was the highest ranking Inquisitor of the three. We had the fifth brother, the sixth brother, and the seventh sister. But now we actually have two new Inquisitors. Now everybody's been focusing on this one right here. Her name is Reva. 
but nobody's really focusing on this one a lot because we actually might be able to deduce where their ranks are, and by the looks of it, they are both higher ranking than the fifth brother. And in no particular order, I think one of them is the third sister, and the other one is the fourth sister. Because we have a number one, it's the Grand Inquisitor. We have the second sister, it's Trilla, from Jedi Fallen Order. But we don't have a third, and we don't have a fourth. We have the fifth brother right here, who we'll see later and we'll have a choice few words for. We have the sixth brother in Star Wars Rebels and the seventh sister in Star Wars Rebels. And we have the eighth brother in Star Wars Rebels. And, and then we have the ninth sister in Jedi Fallen Order. So all we're really missing is three and four, and these two could perfectly sub in for three and four. Personally, because Reva seems to be the main Inquisitor we're dealing with in this plot line, I'd say she's going to be the third sister, and this girl over here is going to be the fourth sister. But, yeah, this is the main Inquisitor base. You could see some aquatic structures moving out there. I would not be surprised to see a live-action Cal Kestis come in here. Their compassion leaves a trail. Hey, we got Owen Lars. We got the Owen Lars from Revenge of the Sith. Awesome. And they were just watching somebody be hanged, probably for a crime. I think, you know, probably would have been a lot cooler if she ignited her lightsaber and killed him, but whatever. Now that looked like Coruscant. Let's let's go back to that. This looks like the either the underworld of Coruscant, maybe it's Onderon, and that shows that Obi-Wan's going to be moving from place to place. So Obi-Wan does have a mission. We're just not sure what it is. And I'm assuming it has something to do with his quest to be able to become a Force Ghost. Qui-Gon probably uh, tells him to go somewhere, to go to different planets. Uh, for his training, like he told Yoda in Star Wars, The Clone Wars. And so Reva is probably tracking Obi-Wan to whatever this planet is. The Jedi Code is like an itch. He cannot help it. Where is he? This. They did it again. Just slap paint on an actor and call it the fifth brother. What the hell is that? Let me show you the animated fifth brother. Look at this. He has lines in his face, cuts, different shades for the cuts. You know, I mean, I, I, could, I could do without the elongated chin for the live action version, but come on. There's detail in this face, and they're just not given it. They're not given the detail. Where is it? The, the, the eyes? Come on. Come on. We gotta do better than this, guys. We gotta do better than this. And of course, the date was actually changed from May 25th to May 27th. But the bargain is that we get to premiere two episodes on May 27th, which is honestly, I think, a fair deal. Now, it does seem we have a character who's got a blaster on him at some point. This, right here. Now, I don't think this is Obi-Wan. A lot of people have thought it might be Obi-Wan using a blaster, which is so uncivilized, by the way. But I think people thought that Obi-Wan was using a blaster to try and hide the fact that he's a Jedi. But if an Inquisitor is after you, they already know you're a Jedi. So I think this is somebody else trying to help out Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, who could this be? I think it might be Cassian Andor. I think this might be Cassie and Andor in the flesh helping out Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, I think it just makes sense for his character. It makes sense for him because he was always a rebel his whole life. Um, so I think this makes sense for him to be helping Obi-Wan Kenobi. 
Um, cause we also see, if I just move back here, we see two escape pods. One could be for Obi-Wan, one could be for Andor. They're aboard some sort of ship or something. This, I think, might be Andor. From the back, it could really be Andor. It might be Owen Lars, but the cloak is the same, the hair is the same. I think this is Cassie and Andor. See, same type of tunic thing going on. You, you can see slightly in the corner there the raggedy hair coming out. And then look, look, that's the hair. That's the tunic. That's the blaster. And, and, it, and it, it looks like in the distance he's shooting at stormtroopers. That makes sense. This has got to be Cassie and Andor. It's got to be. We get some birds flying out there. Hope survives. We get a shot of Obi-Wan. Now, another thing this could be, another thing that this series could be honing into is the start of the rebellion. Five years in, there really isn't a rebellion. There are little rebel cells, little insurrections that Cassie and Andor, I'm sure, is a part of, but Cassie and Andor's involvement in the Kenobi series that I'm predicting would mean that even though Obi-Wan might be going on some sort of spiritual journey to become a Force ghost, and learn from Qui-Gon, he could actually be trying to help organize a rebellion. And that might that, that could actually perfectly tie into a new hope where he needs to get to Alderaan. You know? He needs to get to Alderaan so that he can meet with Bail Organa. And those two go way back, but why would Bail Organa be asking for Obi-Wan's help unless he really needed it, and unless Obi-Wan might have helped him in the past? create this rebellion and start this rebellion. So as much as Obi-Wan has a duty to protect Luke Skywalker, which might be a little bit of a problem for some people, including me, him leaving his post in order to help kickstart a rebellion, that might be pushing it for me just a little bit because Luke is his number one priority. Starting a rebellion is not his number one priority. His number one priority is making sure that Luke is okay, but they might be able to write that off without it upsetting too many fans. Now, of course, we don't get any Darth Vader in this trailer, which I'm actually quite happy about. You know, save the big reveal. We did get some leaked footage of on the set, Vader and Obi-Wan fighting on Tatooine. Um, I'm not going to show that here right now. Uh, if you guys just look it up, I'm sure you can find it. Uh, and we do see them fighting on Tatooine a little bit with a bit of a force push. And of course, we have the ever-famous Hayden Christensen coming back to play Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. Now, I really do not think it's going to be a real battle between Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi. If it is, I'm going to sue Kathleen Kennedy because she would have just ruined one of, the, one of the most influential parts of the original trilogy, which was... Obi-Wan Kenobi meeting Darth Vader again after 19 years. When I left you, I was but the learner, now I am the master. If this is a real fight that really happens between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, I am going to be extremely upset. However, if she plays the smart move and takes inspiration from the comics, and this is more of a force vision battle, that makes more sense. And even in the concept art, We've got concept art, and we saw Darth Vader fighting Obi-Wan Kenobi in his Tatooine outfit on Mustafar. There was clear lava in the background. That would make sense for it to look like a Force Vision battle. And I really hope that's what we go with here. I also think we will kind of be switching perspectives. Now, I said this in my original Kenobi ser series theory. I said that we'd be switching perspectives between Darth Vader and Obi-Wan. I still think that's going to happen, but I actually think it might be a four-way split perspective thing, which is a risky thing to do, but hopefully they'll be able to pull it off. So I think it's going to be between Kenobi, Darth Vader, Reva, the new Inquisitor, and Owen Lars. Now, obviously, the first three make sense. Reva is being set up to be the new main antagonist, with the Grand Inquisitor and Darth Vader 
being like the end goal villains that we fight off. Maybe the Grand Inquisitor isn't even a part of it all that much. Maybe he has to go off and fight Kanan Jarrus or whatever. I know that Kanan Jarrus isn't actually at large here. That was just a joke. But Reva seems to be the main antagonist of the Kenobi series with Darth Vader coming in at the end to do a force vision battle. That's where I think this is going. And I think we might have some character development for Reva like we had with Trilla in Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, not necessarily with her turning back to the light side, but maybe with her going rogue, denouncing the Empire, or something like that. But I also think we'll get some Owen Lars perspective because we already saw Owen Lars get a little bit of screen time in this trailer. And if Obi-Wan is going off planet and is leaving Luke Skywalker with Owen and Maru, then we might get some Owen Lars and Maru Lars perspective of what's going on in Tatooine. Maybe they get interrogated by Inquisitors. Maybe they get asked about Luke Skywalker. Something along those lines. But... I think, I hope, this is going to be a great series. If you're bringing back Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen, this better be a good series. And here's the thing, there's a lot of pressure on this. I actually think there's a lot more pressure on the Kenobi series than there was in the Book of Boba Fett series. Book of Boba Fett series did have a lot of pressure on it. Because you're bringing back Boba Fett. That's a huge thing. And to be completely fair, Jon Favreau... Kind of screwed up Royal on that one. My full, honest opinion about the Book of Boba Fett is that overall, it wasn't good. It isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It wasn't the sequels. But it wasn't good. They did Boba Fett disservice. They brought him down below everybody else's level. Fennec Shan became my new favorite character of the show. But there's a lot of pressure on this. Because the amount of prequel fans that will sue Disney because they ruined Obi-Wan Kenobi and the fact that Kathleen Kennedy is overseeing this personally really scares me and scares a lot of Star Wars fans because they know that she does not have a good reputation with Star Wars. So I am cautiously optimistic in the words of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm cautiously optimistic. But uh, yeah, I really hope that this series is good. And if it's not, then I guess I'm just deleting my Disney Plus account. I don't like giving my money to Disney anymore anyway. So, eh, what are you going to do? I do have a video coming soon. It's a very easy video to make. It's going to be a fun one, and I hope you guys can tune in. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. It's another versus video, similar to Doom Guy vs. Master Chief, one of my best videos on the channel. So uh, with that, thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you like my content, join my Discord, that'll be in the link in the description, and I'll see you nerds in the next video. Nerd out.